The first random graph that we will consider is actually the random graph, uh, meant to say that it is the default random graph that's used, uh, just simply because it may be the most obvious uh, choice of a random graph. This uh, is also called the erdos renyi random graph, based on who originally proposed it. And with any, uh, with any random graph, you need to specify what is fixed or what's known about the, the, the process and then specify the process for how uh, nodes and edges get added to the graph. And so in this case, uh, we need to specify the number of nodes and a probability, and that probability determines what is the probability to connect any two um, nodes in the graph. And so that clearly has to be a number between 0 and 1. So if you have n nodes in, in the network, what we do is in the, in the erdos renyi graph, we add all n nodes. And so now we have a, a network that has no edges, but has n nodes. And now we loop through uh, each unique pair of nodes, i and j, and we assign an edge with probability p. And so one way of thinking about this, and there's a direct connection that we'll be making with uh, coin flipping, is that a biased coin is a one that flips with a probability uh, of, of getting the heads uh, as being probability p, and that makes pr the probability of getting a tails 1 minus p. And so we, if you get a heads, then that means that you're adding this edge between i and j, and if you don't, then you don't create that edge. And so depending on the value of p, you can imagine that if the probability is high, we're, we expect to get uh, many more edges in the, in the graph, so the density of the, or the average degree of the network gets higher at, on, in expectation. And so this highlights one of the important things about all random graphs is that we clearly get different random graphs each time we build it. That's the random aspect of it. Um, but that they live according to some sort of family of graphs. And so there's something, this essentially this procedure ties them together, um, but that we get this continuum of graphs based on um, how they're generated. And so we're going to specify what we're going to be doing in this video is really specifying what that means to have a family of graphs. So the first thing I want to want you to observe is the fact that all four of these small networks, they all have five nodes, all four of these networks uh, could be possible outcomes of an ER graph with n is equal to 5 and p is equal to 0 0.2. So 20% chance of adding in any given edge. We have five nodes, but any of these four graphs are a possibility. It's possible to flip a coin five times and get five tails. And so that would be this empty um, edge graph. Um, likewise, you could get super lucky and you could get five heads, and that would be the same thing as connecting all possible uh, node pairs. Um, and so typically we see something in between, but again, this is this kind of um, underlines what we mean by expectation. And so there's a crisp definition of what that means in probability, and we'll get to that in a little bit. So if we think about um, adding edges to this graph, remember, we're essentially picking any two nodes and deciding whether or not there is an edge between them. And then we go on to another pair of nodes and decide if there's an edge between them. And so again, we're doing this process of, of um, flipping a coin for each pair of edges. And so the first thing to understand is how many edges are even possible in the graph. And so if we're looking at an undirected graph with, uh, with no self loops, then that means that we have out of n nodes, we're gonna pick groups of two. And so the choose, choose, um, mathematical notation is really useful here. So it's n choose 2 gives us the number of edges that we could possibly have, the maximum possible edges that we've had. And we've computed this in a different way um, uh, earlier in the class. But if you write down what n choose 2 looks like, it, goes, it looks like this. And so if we just write out what the numerator looks like in terms of a few of its terms, so essentially n, n minus 1, and then n minus 2 factorial, then, uh, then we can get this cancellation, which just leaves n times n minus 1 over 2. And so this is, this is the same kind of uh, 
formula that we used when we started talking about average degree. But so this is this is the total number of edges that are possible in this graph. And so if we stick in n is equal to 5, that's 5 times 4, 20 divided by 2 is equal to 10. And so if we were to count up how many edges there are, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Um, there are 10 that are possible in this graph. And so what we're interested in, in quantifying is what is the probability of having so many edges, m edges, in a graph given n and p. So that's what we're going to be building up to. What a, One thing to kind of realize at this point is that it's very intuitive to say that this graph, this empty graph, and this complete graph, these are relatively rare in based on the way that we know flipping coins works. Um, what we would expect, though, is that if 10 is the total number of edges that are possible, each one of those appears with 20% probability. This means that we would expect to have um, two edges in our graph if we had this. Now, remember, there's a random process, so you can have any number. All four of these is, are, are possible graphs that outcome from n is equal to 5 and p is equal to 0 0.2. But this is the one that we would, quote unquote, expect. And again, we'll, we'll have a, a formal definition of what expectation means uh, later in the slides. So the key um, observation in dealing with um, graphs and their graph families based on uh, generating them from random models is the fact that each instance appears with different probability. So um, while we can get uh, an exact sequence of head flips like HTTH, we can also get THHT, which has the same number of heads and tails, but appears in a different order. And so the um, so what we're quantifying on this slide is the fact of what is the probability of getting this exact sequence. And then on the next slide, we're going to be talking about what is how does this change the probability if all we care about is the number of heads and number of tails the fact that you can get head, heads and tails in different orders like this, and that, so that both of these exact sequences would count for the same number of heads. Okay, so on this slide, let's just talk about getting this exact sequence or any exact sequence. And that would be essentially equivalent to getting M. So if M is the number of heads, or in this case, the number of edges in the graph, then we successfully add those edges, m of those edges, and so that happens with p probability, and so it's just p to the m. So the probability of getting a heads is a half in an unbiased coin. Uh, the probability of getting another heads is another half, and so if these are independent events, then we just multiply these, and so that gives this exponent p to the m. Um, if we have a total possible edges of capital M, which is computed the same way that we just did on the previous slide, then the remaining edges, capital M minus little m, uh, appear with probability 1 minus p, essentially that they were, not, uh, they were not flipped as heads, they were flipped as tails, or essentially that those edges were not added. So the probability of getting this exact sequence is really just a function of uh, getting p to the m times 1 minus p to the capital M minus m. So it's really just a function of the, uh, the fact that I have so many heads and so many tails. And so notice that this exact sequence and this exact sequence happen with the same probability. So um, uh, we would just multiply out this formula to get what the probability of this first sequence is. And that actually would end up being the same probability for the second sequence. And it would be the same for a sequence that looked like this. However, the number of ways in which you can get two heads and two tails uh, depends on um, the probability for flipping. So um, these probabilities, these uh, impact how many different ways uh, or the, and the size of the, of the set here also determines how many different ways we can get heads and tails. So let's take a look at that. All right, so if we know, um, so let's just take a look at this little example with four, four nodes and 
up to six possible edges, right? And so if we want to understand what are the ways to have two edges, so there are a variety of different ways to have two edges. So when I draw this, that's, I mean that the edges are connected between these two nodes. Um, the network would look like this. So we get horizontal edges. And then you can see we get all of these different types of edge patterns if we want to have exactly two edges. And so if we count them up. There's, um, there's six different ways here, four different ways here, four different ways here, and one here. And so that adds up to 15. And that is the same thing as taking six choose two. And so that is out of six possible edges, we're going to pick the, the groups of two. So we're going to take all the six edges and we're going to choose to have them in pairs of in uh, groups of two and so that's also um, 15 and so the way that we're going to update our equation um, we're no longer evaluating p of g which is what we were doing before this is the probability of getting a specific graph instance or essentially a sequence of head flips now what we're going to do is we're going to get the probability the generating a graph that has exactly m edges and so we don't care what order that happens in and because we don't care what order that happens in we pre-multiply what we had before this is what we had before this is the probability to get any specific graph with m edges and then this is the number of different ways that you can get a graph of little m edges if you have a total of capital m edges that are possible And so we've used this, um, this notion of flipping coins uh, throughout the description of the ER model. Um, and so this generalizes uh, into the fact that this really just captures um, the number of successes out of a sequence of independent trials. So each, each adding of edge or each coin flip needs to be independent. And so we're just keeping track of how many successes we get, how many heads we get, or how many edges we add. And this is exactly what the binomial distribution uh, models. And so um, this connection between coin flipping and edge addition or any sort of this kind of success, these have a similar theme. And it's this idea that we have independent trials and we're keeping track of successes out of a binary, um, a binary option. And so uh, just to reinforce the fact that our formula is indeed true, let's take a look at flipping a coin three times. And so we can write out all of the different possibilities that you can get. And so turns out there are eight different ways, eight different sequences uh, that you can get if you flip a coin three times. And if we are interested in having exactly uh, two... Uh, I think we're going to talk about tails because that's what I've underlined here. If we want to get exactly two tails, which is actually the same thing as getting exactly two heads, we can get exactly two tails in these three different ways. And so the probability of getting exactly two tails would be three different ways out of the eight total ways that we have. So this is called the counting way of doing probability. Um, and now we can use this formula to analyze the same thing. So if we insert number uh, two in here, then we can calculate that. We calculate capital M. So that's uh, three, uh, that's the number of trials. So three minus, uh, three minus one, two over two. That gives us the total number of um of flips that we would have so that's just three and we're going to take pairs of those and then each of those happens so this is going to be an unbiased coin with probability one half and so if we plug all that in we get the fact that uh the probability to get two tails is indeed three eighths so this formula is indeed modeling um what we would expect based on a counting method of probability